Well, folks, after two weeks of waiting, we're finally back to game day eve, and things really pick up this week as Carolina hosts Notre Dame. What's in store for the Tar Heels and the Irish? Let's get right into it. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Friday, September 23rd, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and joining me is the man, Anthony Pagnata, here to help us preview this game. I want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or your first watch every single day. Hey, please don't forget the show is free and available anywhere you get podcasts. So you can subscribe for free right now to make sure that you don't miss a second of your team every day. We want to get right into previewing this game, so let's not mess around. Uh, first, we want to talk, as we always do, Anthony and I will, about just kind of some big picture things. There's a lot of storylines going on. Notre Dame's gotten off to kind of a weird start. Carolina's starting to get maybe some folks back from injury. It's the first Power 5 game. All sorts of things. You're coming off of an off week, and, and you love to see that. But, Anthony, quickly, the first thing I want to ask you about is this. I didn't, I didn't prep you for this intentionally. Yes or no, should Drake may have apologized for his NC State comment? Uh, no, of course okay. he shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Look, man, no, I mean, it's, going. It's, it's rivalry comments. Um, you know, we've seen it from guys that haven't even been involved in the rivalry. You know, I've, I brought up, you know, multiple times here over this week. You know, we just saw Keaton Slovis, the transfer quarterback for Pittsburgh, go up and say F West Virginia before the season started. <laughs> Um, and he's new to that rivalry. Like, th this is a guy that grew up in this rivalry, grew up, um, you know, probably with some disdain towards NC State, as, you know, as, as most Tar Heels have. But at the same time, probably respect because he's a guy that, you know, grew up in a football family. He yep. had, mo you know, he's got to have just from being in this area, but even just from my personal experience of going to a high school in this area when I was growing up. You know, you've got guy, you've got friends, you've got people that you know that go to NC State, and those are the little jabs that you kind of take at Absolutely. them when you talk about that. I think it was, it was interesting timing for the comments. <laughs> um, yeah. It's something that you probably shouldn't say as the quarterback of the team in a press conference. Um, but at the same time, he's 19 years old. He's a guy that I think is extremely confident in himself. And guess what? This is going to be something that if he goes and backs it up on November 25th, we will not be talking about this or it will be considered a legendary moment uh, for Tar Heel football. Um, if not, he's going to have to deal with the backlash of that, too. And I think he's, you know, he's going to learn that, you know, one way or the other, you know, this is when you say something like that, you've got to be ready for the criticism. I mean, look, That's right. here's the thing. We can tell him best. People will go back if we make mistakes and will let us know multiple times. Isn't that right, Isaac? Oh, you know it, man. Cold takes exposed all over the place. You know you've made it when they post something that you said like a dork. Um, I love it. Great answer, Anthony. I'm right with you. This is part of a rivalry. NC State players are saying it as well, and you just love to see it. As Carolina gets ready to play Notre Dame and NC State gets ready to play UConn, here they're talking about each other. You love it. Speaking of getting ready to play Notre Dame, the Irish are off to a weird start this year. Marcus Freeman started his career 0-3, lost the bowl game last year, lost their first two games this year before finally picking up that first victory this year. And, uh, you know, I started to wonder, like, what are, what is that Notre Dame fan base saying? So I reached out to a couple friends of mine who are Notre Dame fans, but they're very rational Notre Dame fans. I just want to read a couple things they've said. And then Anthony, I want to get your take on uh, how we should be evaluating this Notre Dame team. One of the guys said, I think most informed Notre Dame fans knew this year was likely to be a struggle, mostly because of the transition in quarterback and a lack of star talent at wide receiver and running back. I haven't talked to any fan who was panicked about Freeman. The number five ranking at the beginning of the year was a sham. <laughs> Most of us were shocked they stayed as close to Ohio State as they did. Here's another one. Same thing. I mean, you're going to hear me say the same thing here. Depleted wide receiver room due to a wide receiver coach who could not recruit very well and a head coach who allowed it. An inexperienced quarterback and backup. 
the fan base was expecting a nine and three or 10 and two season. And I would be very happy with either of those. The offensive line will be a strength once it, once it matures through a couple of games. The D line is a strength and will keep them in games. People aren't down on Freeman because he's recruiting with excellence, but no fan who understood was expecting a playoff team. Now we have to wonder, can they generate enough offense with Drew Pine at quarterback to win games against equal talent? And there's more stuff I can get into, but I think that kind of paints a good picture for us. Anthony, what do you, what is your response to all that? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I would think of them as well. Um, heading yeah. into the season, I did have questions about their quarterback spot because, you know, we saw Tyler Buckner last year, and uh, the little that we saw of him was rather inconsistent. We even saw Drew Pond at a time last year. We did. I uh, remember we did. he started the game against Cincinnati. That's right. Um, they That's lost right. that game, and a lot of Notre Dame fans were not happy that they <laughs> lost that game. But he's another guy where, you look, he earned that start because the game before against Wisconsin, we all remember that one. I forget which ballpark it was played in. It was it was one of the games inside. <laughs> I'll look up while you're talking. Season. Yeah. And uh, he and he played great. He played great when he came in off the bench. So it's – I think this is kind of where they're at. I think the wide receiver comment is very interesting as well. You know, we we kind of – you know how it is. We're kind of locked in on the Tar Heels and everything, as as the podcast would suggest. But, like, <laughs> you know, we, we know our roster so well where some of the other That's rosters right. you don't really know. But when you made that comment, I started thinking, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Looking at their receivers, I mean, you, you've got – clearly your tight end is a strike. Michael Mayer, we, we've seen him on display here the last two years. That's right. He's That's a heck right. of a player, man. There's a he's reason really he's going to go really high in the draft. But at the same time, you look around the rest of their receiving group, and it's really not all that strong. No. Um, their running back room is good. They still have talent. But look, it, you don't have Kyron Williams back there. And we've learned the last two years, Kyron Williams is one of the more, I think the last two years, one of the more underappreciated running backs in college football. He did some really, really special things there. So uh, I think there are question marks with their offense. But uh, as you mentioned, where they're strong is in the trenches on both sides. I know the offensive right. line hasn't been great so far this year, but it's still an experienced group. A lot of guys that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying to remember, I think they play two underclassmen, and both of those guys were starters from a year ago, Joe Alt and Blake Fisher. Oddly enough, they're tackles, but both guys that are very well respected. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they're loaded. It's the same guys from last year. Isaiah Foskey is going to lead that unit, so you know he's going to be somebody that – uh, is going to get after the quarterback. You got the Adam Eola brothers that are back as well, and then you've got a guy out of their de out of a defensive tackle spot that is leading the team in tackles in Howard Cross the third. It's not a guy that we talked a lot about last year in the matchup, no. but he's no. he's sort of broken out. So I, I think they are in, in terms of how their fan base should probably be feeling coming in. Yeah, I, there's no doubt people are frustrated, especially with that Marshall loss. Because, look, it's it's a team that in Marshall that I don't even know if they're as good as they were a year ago in a lot of people's minds. But, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, they are a team that came in and played inspired. I think it was a Notre Dame team that maybe wasn't exactly prepared for that. There were maybe some guys on the roster that, believe it or not, I know it was a loss, but coming off that loss and the way they lost to Ohio State, a game where most people thought they'd get blown out, maybe they were feeling themselves a little bit. Um, but who yeah. knows? That could be the gut check that they needed, although they didn't look perfect against Cal. So I think it's a work in progress for them. Um, but here's the thing. Carolina's got to realize this is a team that is going to come in motivated to win these Absolutely. types of games because here's the thing. You look around the rest of their schedule, Notre Dame always plays a tough schedule. And you yeah. know there's teams like USC that are still on the horizon for you. If they're a team that wants to be in the conversation for the New Year's Six or even a high-end bowl game, they're going to need to win these games. And you better believe if there's one thing that you're going to get, it's going to be a fight from Notre Dame. So Carolina's got to be prepared. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it's funny, uh, we look ahead to this, and it's like going to be a very interesting matchup, at least with what we've seen so far, of strength on strength and weakness on weakness. Carolina's strong offense against – Notre Dame's strong defense, and then Carolina's woeful and porous D thus far against uh, Notre Dame's anemic offense. And so that's what we're going to spend the show talking about, folks. So dial in and get ready for that. 
Um, one last quick thing, Anthony, and then we'll move in that direction, mm -hmm. is Carolina has had a lot of notable injuries we've been tracking and tracing. Um, uh, behind the curtain here, we're recording this on Friday where we got some great news about Josh Downs definitely returning, and uh, we're, we're trending to see what some of these other guys are going to do. Um, uh, like how what what's the landscape of these injuries for the Tar Heels? Uh, I, I think it's I think they're in a good spot, honestly. I think, you know, coming out of the bye week, they got the bye week at really the perfect time for them um, because there were some question marks. You know, who knows if, if I know he's already been said that he's going to be in. He was we were told that on Monday, but who knows if a guy like Miles Murphy would have been healthy if they would have had to play a week ago. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Rollin being back for this matchup. I just talked about how that defensive line from Notre Dame is going to test Carolina. Having Spencer Rollin back is going to be huge because you, I mean, you watched that game against Georgia State. That was one of the main things you probably noticed. The man, having a veteran guy like Spencer Rollin in there could probably help them. And then, of course, as you mentioned, we learned it yesterday that Josh Downs is going to be back. So uh, that is huge. I, I know that Kobe Pesor has done some really good things, but teams are going to start throwing different things at Pesor. And, and the other thing is, is look, the more weapons that you have, the better, especially in a game like this, where now I, I know that you face some quality opponents, or at least we think quality opponents. Georgia State, um, they are – I don't know what to make of that team. They just <laughs> lost to Charlotte last week after we thought, man, they put up two really good fights against us and against South Carolina. So I have no yeah. idea – um, but and, and, and App State, which I mean, that was a rough first game for them. This is easily the best defense that they've played so far this year. So having Josh Downs in there with Kobe Pace or with J.J. Jones, with Gavin Blackwell, and maybe with maybe. Antoine Green, maybe, maybe we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> that would be huge. And that would be I mean, that that would just take this offense to a whole nother level. And that is what we're going to get into next. What does this offense look like against that strong Notre Dame defense? We're going to hear Anthony's thoughts on it right after I tell you about Underdog, which this episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up this college football season. I've created my own account with Underdog, and let me tell you exactly what I'm looking at on my pick em slip this week. I'm looking at Drake May over 254 and a half passing yards. Yeah. I'm taking that. I know Notre Dame's stout, but still give it to me. And on the flip side, I'm looking at Drew Pine, Notre Dame's quarterback, having less than 217 and a half. Underdog Fantasy is easy to play and available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players across any team. It doesn't just have to be your own. And decide if they will finish higher or lower than the stat given. It's one of the easiest fantasy games to play out there, and you could win cold hard cash in a single game. So sign up with promo code locked on one word and underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100 and get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. Once again, that's Underdog Fantasy promo code locked on all one word. Get on get in on the college football pick 'em action today. All right, Anthony, tell us Let's hear it from you. What are you really, really honing in on, zoning in on when you watch Carolina with the ball in this game? Well, I mean, you mentioned it right there in your ad, Isaac. Man, what is, <laughs> what is this? Uh, what does Drake May do against this passing defense, man? This is a team that's allowed 184 yards per game through the air. They have done a really good job so far with that. And look, you can say whatever you want about the Marshall, you know, the Thundering Herd, a team that doesn't throw the ball a lot, really focuses on the ground game. Cal, I mean, look, we, I, we, we've we all you, – you have your opinions, <laughs> I mean, on either Jake Plummer or Jack Plummer, um, the, the, the dad and the son, very similar quarterbacks, <laughs> very controversial guys that uh, are probably just middle-of-the-road guys. But, uh, no, I mean, you look back to that first game of the year, and I know it was the first game of the year. I know they lost uh, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. But, man, that group shut down C.J. Stroud, who is yeah. one of the two best quarterbacks in the country. I think most of us probably look at him and Bryce Young. So, man, right. it is – this is a challenge. But I think what it is more is it's more of a – it is a a proving ground of measuring – I think a measuring stick is probably the better word to go with for Drake May. 
if this is a guy that is going to be in Heisman discussions, if this is a guy that is going to potentially be in the conversation for ACC Player of the Year, which we think at this point through three games, he, he's got an opportunity. This is one of those games where he goes out and, look, I don't think he's going to put up numbers like he did against App State. If he does, great. If he does, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, put him one or two in the Heisman race. Like, that Absolutely. would be that would be unprecedented. But um, as long as he goes out, takes care of the football, and continues to show us some of those tools that he has showed us so far, a guy that can just make things look easy, good, quick decision-making, that kind of stuff, I think that you, you can come out of this game pretty confident. So I'm going to be watching how he matches up against this Notre Dame defense. And, and part of that, I think, kind of goes into the second thing that I'm watching, and that is going to be this offensive line versus that defensive line yep, absolutely. of Notre Dame. Remember, the last two years, Carolina's come in, their offensive line play has not been great, especially a year ago. But if you go back and watch that game, that was one of their better performances. That was a group mm -hmm. that got up for that matchup. They knew they had to play well, and they did. And this is an offensive line group that we think so far is a lot better than a year ago. I know that they've still had their moments where they, they, they go through lapses. They had one against App State, and they had one against Georgia State, where they let up pretty much three sacks in a burst. Uh, but other than that, they've kind of taken care of business. So – I think they need to they, they need to get off to a faster start in the run game. Mac Brown said that on Monday, and I thought that was a great point by him. Was that look, Carolina finished the game uh, with the with a back over a hundred yards uh, with a, with a lot of success on the ground in that fourth quarter. But prior to that, they had really yeah. struggled to run the football right. consistently right. early in the game. So let's see them get off to a more consistent start up front. But ultimately, let's see how much confidence we should have in this offensive line, and even. If this team gets beat, even even if you give the edge to Notre Dame down there, it's it's got to be an extremely slight edge. They have to be able to hold their own and fight for most of the night. Um, and if they do, I think they have a heck of a chance in this game. And then you know the last thing that I'm watching is look we're we're at we know that Josh Downs is going to be back. Is Antoine Green going to be back? And if he is, what does the rotation look like? At yes, wide yes, because absolutely. You, you've got to get Kobe Pesor on the field somehow. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, remember in the offseason, we heard that they want to move Josh Downs a little bit more on the outside to sort of help him out. Well, Kobe Pesor has given you the opportunity. He can play the slot, man. We know that. So, hey, let's see if that's in the game plan for him. And then how do they work Antoine Green back in? The other – element of it is is look these guys are returning but remember that they are some of these it, they might be taking it a little bit slower especially that's right. that's especially right. with downs i think with with green that's kind of one of those ones where because it's a collarbone injury you're kind of either ready to go or you're not you're like not once you're right. ready to go i think you're going to be pretty close to 100 percent because it's not a tissue injury or anything that's like right. that where with josh downs the knee the ligament issues that's that's probably the concern with him. So you're going to take it a little bit slower. So how do they sort of mix those guys in? And ultimately, what does that rotation look like? Boy, great stuff, Anthony. I'm right with you on on all of that. Like this, uh, like I know it's a big game against Notre Dame, but it's ultimately not a conference game. And so you don't want to blow your chances, as you talked about earlier in this week, with the division being wide open. Like you want to make sure you have as much Josh Downs as you can for those games. And so like ease him in, do what you need to do. Love that. I, I mean, I'm very curious to see because you're I'm exactly on track with you. Like you have to get Kobe Pace or the ball. He's shown you that he can do it. Like when these guys are all healthy, do we see ever a lineup with those three guys as your starting receivers with Josh Downs moved outside, Antoine Green, and maybe Pesor in the slot? Like, is that a reality? Impossible. You know, like if, if those are going to be your most productive receivers, try it, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I, I think this this is prove it game for Drake May and that offensive line. And that that's where our eyes have to be because if you're going to do it, as you well said, my friend, this is the time to do it. Great, great stuff. Now, uh, we are going to get into talking about the other side of the ball when Notre Dame has it 
and Carolina is trying to stop him. Uh, what on earth are we going to see? Uh, we'll find out about that in just a second after I tell you about our drive for five. We are about a month and a half away from Carolina's first basketball game of the season. In fact, live action with Hubert Davis is a week from today. That is so hard to believe, and I cannot wait. So we have set a goal of getting to 5,000 YouTube subscribers by that first game. Would love for you to join us. Would you be one of our next subscribers? Thanks so much for hopping in. All right, Anthony, let's flip it. Let's go on the other side. Let's go on the defensive. What are you watching for when North Carolina has defensive responsibility? Something painful. Um, no, sorry, I got, I got, I got stuck in a bad spot. Um, no, I mean seriously, it's. Uh, I mean, look, it, it, I. It seems like we go to the same stuff all the time with this unit, but it's ultimately it starts up front, man. What are they able to do? And 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 I think one of the other interesting things is is look, now we've had the bye week. Is there a different rotation up front? Because I've been imploring this for the majority of the season. Look, there are plenty of talented guys up there. There really aren't a bunch of guys that have proven themselves throughout the career and are just going through slumps. I mean, look, Miles Murphy's had some moments. Ray Velocic's had some moments. But especially at, at edge rusher, there is nobody that should be locked into that position. So are we going to see more rotation up front? Because at some point, you have to just say to yourself, look, we got to put – somebody else different out there and see if we can't start getting better results. Because in this game, you've got to be able to get after <laughs> the quarterback. You want to be right. able to, uh, the main thing for me in this game, you've got to be able to slow down the run. This is a team that's not running the ball. Well, they're averaging 117.7 rushing yards per game, which is a very low output for a Notre Dame team, but that's they've right. still got some talented guys, man. Chris Tyree is, is a former five-star. He's got a good mix of speed and power. Uh, Audric Estime, he will run you over if he if, if you get in his way. <laughs> but, hey, man, they're, they're not running the ball well really at all to start the season. So you should be able to stop the run. But in order to do that, you've got to win the line of scrimmage. That's right. That's and you right. want to make sure that the, when the ball is in the hands of Drew Pine, Put him under pressure. This is not a guy that has succeeded, to be honest with you. I mean, look at the the facts. He's only – this is only going to be his third start. So he hasn't been faced with a ton of these, you know, these these struggles either. So I think Carolina's defensive line has got to show that, look, we've got the talent down there. We were talked about in the offseason for a reason. And this is going to be one of those games. I know this is the toughest offensive line that you're going to play so far. But at some point, I mean, it's not going to get any easier. That's no. going to be the strength of the Virginia Tech team that you're going to play later on this year. You've got a Pittsburgh team where that's going to be the strength of that unit as well. And a couple other teams down the line. So, Carolina, your defensive line, look, you didn't get it rolling against the teams that we thought you should have gotten it rolling against. No offense, that's your own fault. Now it's time to step <laughs> up against these bigger opponents and let's see what you've got. And, you know, sort of to, to, to the same – I. I level of criticism we talked about that defensive back room this is another game where you guys have to step up this is one where you should not be picked apart by this offense they have not picked apart anybody so far this year the thing I want to see though most is you've had two weeks is there better communication on the back? Yes. Because we've talked yeah. about that so much. Can you limit the big plays? Because we talked about that so much in the preseason. Those were the two pillars that Gene Chizik and Charlton Warren were building this defense around when they first came back. And right now, we're not seeing that. They're letting up a ton of big plays. And, and look, it's not just the game against App State. That was it at its worst. They let up 22 big plays which are, are plays of 15 yards or more passing, 10 or more yards rushing. But they have allowed nine or more of those plays in each of the first three games of the season. You can't have that happen. You've got to limit those types of plays, and especially against an offense like this that is struggling. So I will definitely be keeping an eye on that. And then the other thing is, is those linebackers. I'm looking for, for consistency from those guys. Because they're just coming off a really good game. Well, they play really well against Florida AMM as well. But sandwiched in between there, it was a quiet day for Power Eccles. It was, you know, kind of one that was 
all over the board for Cedric Gray, made some tackles, but he <laughs> missed some tackles as well, missed the he most did. on the team against App State. So what what is that group? Are they able to put it together more consistently moving forward? Because I think we can all agree that's the best unit on this team right now, yes. but yes. you want them to be that strength every single week instead of sometimes leaving you scratching your head about missed tackles. Yes, and uh, it's funny. If, if you're listening and you're paying attention, you notice we just talked about all three levels of the defense for a reason, <laughs> for a very good reason, because they've got to put it together. And, and like you said, Anthony, I think it hits at that heart. We've got to have Power Eccles and said Gray saying, fellas, we're going to do it. Come with us. Let's make this happen. And you talked about that line, give me the butcher. I want to see Mr. Rucker out there doing work. And that's something I'm yes. really curious. Will Not only will we have rotational change, what are, the, what are the starters going to look like? Will there be any difference there coming out of these two weeks that you mm -hmm. talked about? That could be something very, very interesting. Well, my friend, this brings us to the moment of truth. Our predictions for this game. As of right now, we've got a one and a half spread with North Carolina favored i would not have thought coming in they were favored but given uh, i think the way notre dame has started this year that's where the line is sitting at what are you going with sir well um yeah and and, and to be honest you, you were actually you would have been right earlier in the week notre dame was a two-point favorite that betting line has since shifted so uh i think people are realizing that look notre dame is struggling um, but at the same time, I think there's hesitancy with Carolina as well. I mean, th three and O teams out of the ones that they're talking about around the country, Carolina is that team that most people seem you know, the most apathetic about. And I think because of the things we've talked about, there's probably good reason for that. But I do think that this is a Tar Heel offense that I I've said it on, on here uh, and, and on my own podcast That's right. as That's well. Right. I think that this is an offense that is special, that is one of the better ones in Tar Heel history. I, I said it the other day when I was talking about it with my buddy Josh Marlow. I don't think that Phil Longo is getting enough credit for just how good of a job mm. he has done in the first here, here. few games. Those game plans have been unreal out of the gate to start the year. And I get they're not against the greatest opponents, but I mean, this is a guy that we've talked about his red zone struggles. They have entered the red zone 10 times. They have scored a touchdown 10 times. So they are doing everything that they have to do. I trust this offense. I'm still hesitant about this defense. And it's why my scoring, my, my, my line is so high in this game. I have Carolina winning, but I think it's 35 to 27. And I think there will be a lot of people that will still be asking questions about this defense after this game. I have to see it to believe it, though, with them. I want them to prove it to me. They've got the talent. I know they do. But it's time for that talent to show up. I think Carolina's offense, until it actually shows up, and even then, they still, I think, have to take the mindset of we have to score as much as possible because this defense yes. right now is just one that we don't really have a lot of answers with. I think Carolina's offense is up to the task in this one, and I think they get off to their first 4-0 start since 1997. That's right. That's absolutely right. I'm going to have to take the Tar Heels as well. I'm going to do it by just a field goal, though, with the crowd, for me, making a huge difference in this game. I think Keenan, uh, where you will be, Josh, there in the stadium. I told right. you, Josh. Anthony. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he'll be You're there, too. Talking. He'll be there, too. You know it's, his, it's, uh, it's his birthday, by the way. I have to shout him out because he's going to get mad yes. if I don't. So happy birthday happy. to my buddy, Josh. Um, he is, of course, my co-host, and we've been friends since uh, sixth grade in, high, in, in middle school. So uh, it's been it's tremendous, and we're excited uh, to be able to be in Keenan Stadium first time this year. Um, we're usually season ticket holders, but unfortunately, due to the job, our experiences are limited. But this was when we had to get in. So yeah, I, I agree with you. The environment's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Marlo. Thankful for you, buddy. Hope it is a great one. And that will help us definitely pick the Tar Heels in this one. The defense doing just enough with the offense really, once again, for me, winning this game under the watchful eye of Drake May and the protection of that offensive line who's going to show up and show out. I like it. I like it. I like it. We're both taking the Tar Heels to cover that point and a half spread. 
Mr. Pagnotta, thank you as always. Great stuff. Really appreciate your wisdom and insights. Can't wait to uh, see what actually plays out in this game. Will the defense step up? Will the offense keep rolling? What is Notre Dame going to look like as Carolina gets into playing their first Power 5 school this year before really getting into the thick of ACC play in all the weeks ahead? That's it for today's episode and this week of Locked on Tar Heels. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure you tune in on Monday for our recap of the Notre Dame game. And then, you know, throughout the week, we're going to be getting ready for live action with HD. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow our guy, Anthony, at HTB Anthony. And, of course, make sure you check out his podcast and the site Heel Tough blog you can follow me on twitter at isaac shade please subscribe wherever you're listening smash the like button leave some comments on your thoughts on the game you can also get more on the acc by making locked on acc your second listen today host candace cooper and the local experts of locked on take you around the conference in 30 minutes five days a week hope you all have a great weekend we both do and we want to remind you that it is always a great day to be a tar heel Until next week, peace.